What's up guys, it's BrickLiver18 here today, back with part number two of the Prague LEGO Museum Tour. We're going to be starting out back in the lower section of the museum in the basement, just past the LEGO City and Vehicle Room. Just as a refresher, that is what this room looks like right here, and then I'll spin around and show you these display cases that, once again, we have already taken a look at. We've seen this room entirely and all the LEGO sets that are included here, so we'll continue through the hallway and we'll start off by taking a look at these display cases. The first really neat thing is this incredible display case full of old LEGO sets and each one of these would be so expensive. We've got things like the original carousel, the bird set, the Sydney Opera House, and all the modular buildings you can think of. They even had the 50 years of the LEGO brick set which is one that I seriously regret not getting in 2008. They also had the mini modular set from several years ago now showcasing some of the original modular buildings. And then they had this shelf of some of the older modular buildings that have been released, you know, the Palace Cinema, the Grand Emporium, as well as the Fire Brigade, the Green Grocer, and the Hotel. These ones have been off the shelves for a really long time now, and like I mentioned, are incredibly pricey. They've also got a lot of pulp culture sets, as well as a bunch of light switches that actually allow these modular buildings to light up and make sounds. They've got a massive display case for the incredible Eiffel Tower set. This is like the Lego architecture before it became Lego architecture. It is incredibly large and very, very neat to see. They had history for the Eiffel Tower on the back, and if you listen closely, you can even hear some French music. This display case here honestly might be my holy grail of Lego sets. It is the Lego architecture line, which you all know I absolutely love. They had many of these really old architecture sets that are released, you know, before I even got collecting the architecture line. So it was amazing to see all of them here, and I could only wish I could take some of these home with me. I love that they just had so much variety and so many of the older sets here included, as well as some really exclusive ones like the Lego house and the Lego store. They also had old Kirk's house, which is really cool. I don't believe I've ever seen this one in person before, and even more of the Billund exclusive sets down below. This display case was also pretty fun because as I've been touring around Europe recently, I've actually been to a lot of these places in the last few weeks, or I'll be going soon, so it's really neat to see them all here in LEGO form. This display case here had a bunch of the sets that I really wish I would have been able to pick up, including the Lincoln Memorial and the Rockefeller Center, and of course the Flatiron Building and the Empire State Building. Those are ones that I just see and I love and I'm just so regretful that I don't have those in my collection. In these glass display cases here, they had a whole bunch of incredible castle sets and the kingdom sets. I know many of you would have dined to have seen all of these. Also now you can see the museum really started to pick up, it was actually raining here. So I waited for the crowd to clear out and then I started filming the contents of these really really cool display cases. And then in the corner here, they had this really cool character built of Lego bricks. I believe this is a pretty famous cartoon in the Czech Republic because a lot of the kids seemed to love it and it actually spoke. We also have some history of the Lego group and the Lego founder down the hallway, which is really cool, all written there, as well as some history of the Lego minifigure. We also see some of the important details of the LEGO group including the first fire, global challenges and so much more. Moving into this room, this one's almost like a vault. We've got the Taj Mahal here which is really really exciting, again a set that I always loved and we've even got a picture of the real one. And then through this massive vault which must have just been here and you know was too expensive to take out, we've got another room full of LEGO display models. This one here is a lot more LEGO castle sets as well as a lot of LEGO boats which I know many of you will be very very excited to look like. These are much older Lego system sets which was really cool. We've even got some Harry Potter ones, some King of Persia and so much more. Really cool boxes all up top. Looking at all these models you can just feel the history and just see how old and unique these sets really are. I especially love looking at those elephants up there. They haven't made those parts in a very long time. Throughout this case here, I recognized a bunch of some of the old castle sets, including that castle down on the right that I actually do have. They've also got another LEGO light switch, and this one actually makes the dragon rotate. I also think this catapult is amazing. And if only I could get into these glass display cases and test out and see if these LEGO ships and some of these pirate sets would float or not. 
Now here's just a look at the display cases that are on the opposite side of the room. Again, more pirate sets, more bolts, and more really, really cool things to look at. It's pretty remarkable that even though this is a pretty small room, they really made everything fit. So now going back through that hallway that we just came, we're actually going to go left now off the main LEGO City room and take a look at some of the other displays that this LEGO museum has to offer. This room here has some Czech Republic specialty builds, this one being the main strip and some of the buildings you may see. And then we've actually got a whole write-up for the Prague Tower, which is also known as the Powder Tower, which was originally built in 1475 and was used to the entrance of the city and a defense tower and you guys can just see it's still in the main center and it is incredibly detailed. And then there's also this pretty incredible build of the St. Basil's Cathedral which was incredibly pretty and lots of really cool colors. There was this really cool glass display case full of Lego Fabuland sets, which is a cool theme to see. Not many people really have that in their Lego collection, so it was neat to see all the cool things they came up with, as well as some like Duplo or something like that at the bottom with some Lego cars. And in this display case here, we've got some Lego stationary sets, some sets that I haven't really seen before, as well as some Lego ideas, some hearts, and then some Toy Story sets, which were really exciting to see. Lots of old ones here, definitely from several years ago. This next part of the museum, the lighting gets really bad, but here we've got a model of the Prague National Theater, which is really cool. It is so incredibly detailed and there's lots to see. And then there's also a model of the Lego Tower Bridge. This obviously was an official set, but it's still really cool. There's a write-up here for the Tower Bridge as well and the history behind it. And then there's a write-up for the Charles Bridge, which is a very famous Prague bridge. And as you can see, they actually had the model here built with hundreds of Lego minifigures on it and it was so detailed. This is a huge bridge running through the city and is obviously very important to the Prague history. So it was really neat to see this built out of Lego. My only regret is I wish the glass didn't have so much glare because of the lighting. And then there was this incredible model of the Prague National Museum, which was actually right near the hotel I was staying at, and this building was absolutely incredible. You can see it took over 120,000 Lego bricks and is a beautiful model. There's even a mirror behind it, so you can see all of the details and everything that's actually included in the museum. It's not just a front facade, there's detail as well. And then in the very back of the museum here, there was this Lego playroom where we've got kids and adults playing, putting bricks on the wall, and so much more. They also had this really cool display of Lego butterflies on the ceiling. Back in the far hallway, just as we're about to go up the stairs, they had this really cool glass display case of Lego minifigures. There were so many minifigures in between these couple doors, and holy crap. They had pretty much every series and pretty much every collectible minifigure you could ever imagine. It was stuffed. It was really hard to see all the figures actually because there were just so many here. I personally especially love looking at all of the Great Britain and the sports minifigures because I've never really had those in my collection. They even had some gross video ones, ew, and this really cool display of underwater Lego sets making everything look like, well, underwater. Now going up the stairs, which is a different staircase than the one we originally came down, they've got even more history about the LEGO group, including many of the different logos and history of the brand. Walking up the stairs past the underwater display case, that's where you actually head to the second floor, really the original first floor of the museum with more cool underwater displays. The first floor is just the store and then the second floor is the rest of the museum. At the top of the staircase here, you can see that there are a ton of old Lego sets. Many are not actually brick based and are from the original Lego line of all the older toys that they used to make. You know, not brick based, but plastic, anything with injection molding and even wooden ones. The history here was pretty crazy because not many people would be able to say they had these sets with so many original boxes and in great condition in their LEGO collection. There's a lot more Lego history written all over the walls of the staircase and I would encourage you all to stop and pause for a minute just to read some of the cool facts about the Lego group and some of the things that you can learn from these museum walls. They've also got a massive display of all the different logos in the history of the logo including the most recent one that came out in 1998.
This is the last thing that we're going to look at before we head up to the space and the Star Wars floor that is on the second floor of the museum. But they've got this really cool display case of a bunch of Lego Bionicle figures. And I know so many of you absolutely love Bionicle and this was a really cool way that they were able to display them. Just so you can see each figure, you know, individually as well as some of the old packaging that they came in. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for checking out part number two of the Lego Prague Museum Tour. I really hope you enjoyed this video, seeing all the different sets that they had on display and seeing the rest of the basement of this museum. There was honestly so many really cool things to show you and so many cool things to see. I have had a blast so far going through this Lego museum and I can't wait to come back with part number three and part number four to conclude this massive tour. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and of course, subscribe and I'm looking forward to seeing you here on the next video here on the Berkeley 18 YouTube channel.